when you try hard you always find an opportunity to improve by yourself in my last episode i managed to make my sensor work stably using arduino nano and bno 055 while studying about arduino i learned that arduino boards are open source and the firmware are mostly compatible with all the arduino boards or those boards which are supported by arduino ide ide means integrated development environment When I saw the result using Arduino Nano, I was a bit worried about how will I transfer those data to my computer via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. I might need another breakout board to integrate with Nano so that I can use those data in Unreal human rigid body for retargeting. I knew another microcontroller called ESP32 which is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module works with Arduino IDE and the same firmware can be used. Hence I could not resist myself to get a new one. to test it before i go with an assumption and guess what from now on i will be using esp32 instead of arduino nano integrated with bno 055 and my today's topic is broken down in three parts first i will talk about adafruit esp32 feather board and the connectivity with bno 055 then i will install a serial plotter software to visualize variety of data like calibration accelerometer gyro using esp32 finally i will determine the t- or the degree of inclination using accelerometer data i am excited and i hope you are too i will be using the source code from my last episode however the connection sheet is different than nano which i will anyway cover today if you have not watched the previous video please check the description below you can also visit my patreon site to read the complete paper and to download the source code so without any further delay let's dive into it now if you are new to this channel please consider to give a like and subscribe. subscribe that means a lot to me The ESP32 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip is the latest generation of expressive products. It has a dual-core 32-bit MCU which integrates with Wi-Fi HD40 and Bluetooth 4.2 technology inside. ESP32 can perform as a complete standalone system or as a slave to host MCU to reduce communication stack overhead on main application processor. ESP32 can interface with other systems to provide Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality. connectivity through the SPI I2C or UART interface ESP32 chip integrates a wealth of hardware peripherals including capacitive touch sensor hall sensor low noise sensor amplifiers SD card interface ethernet interface high speed SDIO UART I2C etc compared to ESP8266 the previous generation microcontroller the ESP32 has a significant performance improvement it is equipped with high performance dual core density ka lx6 mcu one core handles high speed connection and other one for standard and application development the dual core mcu has 240 megahertz frequency and a computing power of 600 dmips if you want to know more about esp32 a link has been given in the description below today i am using adafruit usa h32 which is a esp32 feather board the board is adafruit esp32 based feather made with official wr WM32 module. Adafruit packed everything about the feathers: built-in USB to serial converter, automatic bootloader reset, lithium ion polymer charger, and just all of the GPIO brought out so I can use it with any of our feather wings. The integration of Bluetooth, Bluetooth LE, or Wi-Fi ensure that the module can target a wide range of applications. The Wi-Fi allows a large physical range and direct connection to the internet. Internet through a Wi-Fi router, while Bluetooth permits the user conveniently connect to a phone or broadcast low-energy beacon for its detection. The ESP32's negligible slip current makes it suitable for most battery-powered and wearable electronics applications. That module nestled in at the end of the feather contains a dual-core ESP32 chip, 4 MB of SPI flash tuned antenna, and all the passives I need to take advantage of the powerful new processor. The ESP32 has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth Class C support. That means it's perfect for just about any wireless or internet connected project. Because it's part of the Feather ecosystem, I can take advantage of the 50 plus wing that Adafruit designed to add all sort of cool accessories. It comes fully assembled and tested with a USB interface that let me quickly use it with Arduino IDE or low level ESP32 IDF. I have 
have got the shouldered one as it was barely costing me anything. If you want to know more about it, please check the description below. To wrap up, the ESP32 is an extremely powerful IoT enabled microcontroller and using an ESP32 development board suitable for both beginners like me and advanced users. Most of the cheap and cheerful ESP32 development boards are powered by ESP WRWM32 modules, one of the great choice for IoT application nowadays. The ESP32 is meant to be used in beating a wireless application, but its powerful features are not fully functional with Arduino platform on most of the development board right now. That's the only drawback I noticed though. Getting started with the board was quick because I had already installed USB to serial converter driver in my PC. I could simply connect the micro USB to USB cable between the board and my computer. After hooking it up, my computer automatically detected the COM port and then I tried to upload my firmware directly to the board. Here I was getting some error related to the sync. Here is the first installation to be done in the Arduino IDE to enable the board working with Arduino. As per the website, there are several ways this can be installed but I have chosen simple and easy method. At first go to Express Chief website link given in the description and select the stable release link. After that open Arduino ID. Go to the file preference. Copy the URL in the additional board manager URL section. I can also add multiple URLs using comma separator but this case I need to add only ESP board. Once done go to tools select board and board manager. I can see all my ESP boards are installed in Arduino. Here from the list I select my ESP32 feather as a plugin board. Now if I try to upload the code it will be done without any hassles. Now it's time to connect BNO055 with ESP32 feather. USB32 connectivity with BNO055 sensor is similar like Nano or Pi. As I am using I2C, that means VCC to VCC, ground to ground, STA to STA, and SCL to SC. The concept of I2C is same, which I have already described in my previous video. Link there in the description below. From the diagram, I can make out by looking at the cable color code as I am following the standards. The red wire which is VCC connected to the power supply, 3 volt is fine, I will use the same voltage that the microcontroller logic is based off of. The black wire GND to the common power or the data ground. The yellow wire is connected from SCL pin to I2C clock SCL pin on ESP. The green wire is connected from the SDA pin to the I2C data SDA pin on ESP. I already have installed two libraries while testing with Arduino Nano, Adafruit BNO055, Adafruit Unified Sensor. If you are starting from this video, I strongly recommend to watch the previous video, link is given in the description as I have already done the code walkthrough, library installations and all other setups. Here is the code which I am using to extract the data. From the data, I can see the similar behavior like Arduino Nano. For your information, I already have tested the behavior keeping the device on for 24 hours and believe me it hasn't deviated much. Though there is a small gap between X and Y axis, let me try to calibrate the device. BNO055 calibration is fast, for the time being let me assume the calibration happened behind the scene. In a while I'll show you the calibration output in the serial plotter. Here you can see the post calibration output which looks pretty awesome. Here is the first observation and the improvement I have done in the circuit. If you notice carefully you can see I have changed the sensor orientation from the previous diagram. The word BNO055 should be facing front as it is the nose of the device. Let me consider the nose or BNO055 written pointing to the north. So if I lift it north side then it will be positive x-axis. If I leap towards OS direction, y-axis will be positive. Similarly, other side will be negative directions. And z-axis will be as is, as I have already fixed it by changing the shouldering direction. Lastly, I like to mention that somewhere I read ESP32 I2C pins do not have pull-up registers. I must add them if I want to communicate with I2C devices but BNA055 has 10k pull-up resistors inbuilt. It means I do not need to worry about power management at this moment. So far it is working fine and perfect for me. I'll look into it when I'll put everything in my final solution. 
Now it's time to visualize the data in the serial plotter without messing up my code. As more we go, more complication will arrive in the visualization. Currently we are plotting three channels, accelerometer X, Y and Z. Now we will visualize the calibration data, means three more channels will be added. We also need to manipulate the Y axis range in real time so that we can fit all the different type of data in the same graph. Moreover, I need to manipulate the data in real time, for example, I only want to show the calibration output and when calibration is done I want to show the accelerometer output. at the same time I also want to visualize the raw out all these I want to manipulate in real time and hence we need to improve the visualization so to get a flexible serial plotter you can directly go to hackaday.io or visit the site via Google link is there in the description below at this moment of recording the current version of the serial plotter is 0.12 earlier versions has two releases for windows 32 bit and 64 bit from 0.11 64 bit release has been stopped saying that windows 32 bit should work fine on 64 bit windows i have downloaded 0.12 windows 32 bit setup executable post download i have installed the software and here is the initial view of the software the serial plotter needs to be configured to understand the data being printed in the serial port at first i had to match the bar rate in the plot it should be exactly same as my sketch which was uploaded to ESP32. Secondly, I had to specify the data format as I am printing comma separator text in the serial port with a new line character which I had to specify in the serial plotter to understand as well. Finally, to match the color code with the default serial plotter of Arduino, I changed the color for X axis to blue, Y axis to red and Z axis to green. All these three channels of data are related to the accelerometer. So for better understanding, I change the name accordingly, which are Axel X, Axel Y and Axel Z. On the same application, I can also visualize the raw data as well in the text view. Here you can see all the data are being printed the same way I have printed in the serial plotter of Arduino sketch. I can also manipulate the number of lines and the decimal precision as well here. Let me keep that as default for the time being. Now it's time to print more channels in the serial plotter. An accelerometer is an electromechanical device that is used to measure acceleration. Instrument calibration is one of the primary processes used to maintain instrument accuracy. Calibration is the process to configure an instrument to provide a result for a sample within an acceptable range. Eliminating or minimizing factors that cause inaccurate measurement is a fundamental aspect of instrumentation design. The term calibration of a measurement instrument or measuring system is sometimes confused with adjustment. When adjusting, the parameter of measuring system are adjusted so that the desired measure is displayed correctly. Calibration verifies the precision and reproductibility of measurement instruments such as sensor and measuring systems. Sensors that are calibrated are the prerequisite for precise, reliable, reproducible measurement result. Calibration is one of the key prerequisites for effective quality assurance. The result of the calibration is documented by means of a calibration certificate or calibration report. By specifying the standards, this document can be verified for traceability to national and international standards. The result of calibration is expressed by means of a specification, a calibration function, a calibration curve, a calibration table or calibration diagram. Accelerometers measures calibration in either meter per second square or in G. 1G is the acceleration due to gravity at the Earth's surface or 9.8 meter per second square. Accelerometers also sense the effect of gravity. We use this to provide an easy way to calibrate them. Also, it allows to use them as an inclinometer to measure the angles. Its reading will change as its orientation is changed from horizontal to vertical. I can measure the angles to the nearest degrees. In general, I should not need to calibrate the sensor every time. Adafruit BNO055 libraries gives a function to extract the calibration result. For that, I have created four variables to capture the data. Those are system, gyro, axle, and magneto. The calibration units are ranged from 0 to 3. 0 means uncalibrated and 3 means fully calibrated. 
To visualize the calibration output, I have simply added 4 parameters in the serial plotter with a comma separator. Before uploading the sketch, I had to make sure the serial plotter is disconnected from the COM port as both Arduino ID and the serial plotter cannot work on the same port at a time. Here I can see the first benefit of the serial plot. Now in real time, I can on and off the channels or the parameters which I do not want to plot. The complete data which I have printed from my sketch can be visualized from the text view as well. As I know, I have three axes pointing to X, Y and Z. So to calibrate or precise the G, I will calibrate the sensor in three axes by showing the sensor in each direction 90 degree and 45 degree. In total, six directions I need to rotate the sensor for the sensor to collect the data to derive the precision. As BNO055 doesn't have permanent memory, every time I restart the device, I need to calibrate the same. Later on, I'll try to store the calibration data in ESP32 or somewhere and upload it BNO05 on startup. Now you can see the result after calibration and my sensors are fully calibrated now. If I consider my sensor as an aeroplane and the front is where BNO055 written, if I tilt the front, based on the data plotted I can see positive x-axis is increasing. That means the gravitational force or the g-factor towards the x-axis is increasing the positive directions. If I try the same to the other direction, the negative x-axis will increase. At the same time, the g-value of z-axis will decrease. Using this change in value, can I try to evaluate the inclination of the sensor on x-axis between 0 to 90? degree in both directions. Looking at the values, I can see depending upon the inclination in degree, x-axis values are changing, which is a good sign to work on. Now let's move to derive the mathematical formula to convert these values to degree in rotation. Before that, let me standardize the value 9.8 meter per second squared to g. g means the gravity of r is the net acceleration that is imparted to object due to the combined effect of gravitation and the centrifugal force. That means 1 g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square considering the earth is a sphere and the value will change depends upon the location. The g value on earth surface will be different than the g value 1000 km from the earth surface and this is not depending upon the mass or the weight of the mass. If you want to know more about the g calculation please refer the link below. Here in the diagram you can see the x axis is horizontal or tangent to the earth surface and the gravity is perpendicular to the x-axis which is applied on z-axis. Let's call z-axis gravitational force gz and x-axis gravitational force gx. Remember how accelerometer works as there is no force sidewise the gx value should be 0 and at the same time gz value will be 9.8 meter per second square which we are seeing from the raw value. Now if I tilt the x-axis to some degree, the gravitational force on x-axis will change. At the same time, the gravitational force will also change in z-axis. It doesn't mean that the gravitational force will change in same ratio. Now our job is to determine the angle of inclination. Let's call it theta. Here in the diagram, I can see a right angle triangle created. Let me call that ABC, where the angle ACB is 90 degree. As the original vector before inclination, GZ to GX is 90 degree. Then the angle ABC is 90 minus theta, which means the angle BAC is also theta, simple trigonometry, which gives me tan theta is equal to gx by gz which gives me theta is equal to tan inverse of gx by gz. So we have got the theta or the angle of inclinations. Now let's put down the formula in the sketch. To do that I have included the math libraries in my sketch. I have defined a floating variable type called theta. As I standardize the value 9.8 meter per second square to g, I have divided all the raw values of accelerometer sensor by 9.8. That means the data will now be calculated against g. So the equation to calculate theta in the sketch will be theta is equal to a tan 2 which is the function to calculate tan inverse accelerometer x divided by 9.8 accelerometer z value divided by 9.8. The value of theta will return me in radius. 
radians which i need to convert it to degree multiplying the radians with 180 degree divided by pi will give me in degrees we know the pi value is 3.14159265359 so the formula to determine the theta would be tan inverse accelerometer x axis divided by 9.8 comma accelerometer z axis divided by 9.8 multiplying by 180 degree divided by pi value now if i see the result post calibration i could see the theta changing the inclination of the sensor i could approximating the angle of the change now the same way i can calculate the y axis angle as well let me call the y axis angle phi the formula would be similar like x axis which is phi is equal to tan inverse accelerometer y axis and accelerometer z axis which all are divided by 9.8 multiply by 180 degree by value of pi at this moment i can approximate both x axis and y axis degree of inclination this works perfectly up to a certain degree if i try to tilt the x axis beyond 90 degree the whole thing is breaking down Remember tan theta is a relationship between opposite side and the adjacent side of the right angle triangle so if i tilt it 90 degree then the tan theta reading will be infinity because the adjacent side will be zero that's the reason it started behaving weird so we need to fix this as we are calculating the value based on tan theta the formula will break down beyond 89 degree never mind to that we will fix that anyway For more information about tan curve please visit the link given in the description now let's see what is the inclination angle my program measures when there is a vibration on x axis this was our original problem looks like the problem remains and i can see that even though there is no inclination of the sensor because of the vibration my application is reading the tilt or the inclination angle the same behavior i can observe on y axis as well i am not worried about it because this is a first pass of the implementation where i could approximate the angle based on the accelerometer data so i need to compensate this vibration versus the angle measurement with a low pass filter which is a new concept for me i need to do some study on that let me keep that for the next video so what i have done today in this episode is at first i have replaced the arduino nano with esp32 then to visualize and manipulate the channel of the data in 2d graph i have installed a serial plotter which i can use it in real time to manipulate the channels and finally i have have determined how accelerometer data can be used to approximate the tilt or the angle of the inclinations which works fine up to certain degree however the vibration is causing the problem in the inclination angle calculation although the calculation is not perfect but it is still can be used to a certain angle of inclination up to 89 degree but 45 degree is measured to be a perfect in the next episode i'll try to filter the vibration from the angle measurement and bring the accuracy in the measurement by introducing other sensors like gyroscope as you know i am also learning and my resources are either google suggested research paper or youtube suggested videos on the topic based on the time spent on learning last few weeks i have made this video to document my learning i might be wrong in some cases if you could point out the problem in my current knowledge please comment and help me to rectify that On that note I'm finishing this video here I hope you like the progress and the strategy of the development please stay tuned for such interesting topic and a solution till then stay safe and take care thank you for watching